One out of five businesses will not see the end of its first year. 50% of all businesses fail between the second year and the fifth. Roughly 10% of businesses make it through their first decade, one in 10. The most common reason? 42% go under because there's no market for their product. People just don't want to buy what you're selling. By the end of this video, you'll have a list of 15 businesses that have been around for centuries and will most likely be here way after you're gone. There's an underlying secret all of these businesses share, and you'll learn it today. Here are 15 businesses that will be around forever. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. Number one, food. This includes agriculture, food processing, food distribution, packaged products, and restaurants. Everywhere you go, people eat food. They've done so for thousands of years, and they will continue to do so. The packaging might change, but we still need food. Humans will spend $8.77 trillion in 2022 on food alone, and this number is growing at 5% year over year. Here's what the next few years will look like in terms of food spending and segments. Online food ordering is going up as well as tech seeps into everything. What you'd want to know is that, on average, restaurant owners make anywhere between $24,000 and $155,000 a year. There's an old saying, one who knows how to cook can always make a living. Number two. Residential development. People can't survive without food or shelter. That's why residential development is second on our list. People need homes. They need people to build them. They need to buy, rent, or sell properties. The human population is growing quickly as we get better at fighting off diseases, and on average, we tend to live longer. All of these people will need places to carry their lives out of. What you want to know is that the average real estate developer makes between 25 to 35% profit on large developments, and somewhere around 45% to 65% in smaller ones. Of course, there are many factors that come into play, but that should give you an idea. You might not be in the development business, but you can still make a bank on housing. On average, homes appreciate between 3 to 6% per year. The closer you are to the city center or the hotter the area, the higher that percentage. A rental property will pay for itself in under 10 years from the rent alone. Buy a home once, rent it out, and your family will eat from it as long as you have someone willing to pay the rent. Number 3. Commercial Space Although commercial space technically also falls under real estate, we wanted to put them in separate categories. Humans engage in commerce. It's how we trade value, and it makes up for what we call the economy. From the earliest days of man, people have gathered in squares, piazzas, and souks to display their produce and goods. Now we've got shopping malls, shopping avenues, shopping districts, and so on. Although you can make a lot of profit having your own business, as we've established in the intro of this video, the cards are kind of stacked against you. The owner of the commercial space, on the other hand, makes money no matter what business is being run in their space. Evergreen is when you own the building, not the business running out of the ground floor. Commercial space is more expensive per square foot than residential real estate. Although the cost of building is the same, the difference is only in the price of the land. Businesses, compared to individuals, can afford to pay higher rents because the space allows them to generate revenue, so it's a synergy between the landowner and the business. Number 4. Pharmacy People need medical products. Back in the day, you would buy a special blend of tea from your local shaman. Now, you get your paracetamol next to your cough drops next to your hair growth tablets. Of course, pharma profits blow up during any sort of medical crisis. But even before 2019, the average pharmacist who owned a single pharmacy earned about $150,000 in revenue per year. You deduct the cost of utilities, a licensed employee, and other miscellaneous costs, and you'd still be keeping over 80 grand. 
Pharmacies are great business, and nowadays they franchise them like food. Setting up a pharmacy location costs on average between $200,000 and $300,000. So next time you walk out the house, just pay close attention to how many pharmacies are around you. You'll be shocked. Number five, transportation. This is a big one. We need things and people move from point A to point B, and the faster you can do it, the better. We'll leave the manufacturing side of things out of it because you're probably not going to start building cars or ships tomorrow, but there are some interesting things we've noticed. It was said that the fourth quarter of 2020 was the most profitable in container shipping history. But the astonishing thing is that the profits are growing rapidly. Shipping lines profit in 2021 is estimated to be around 200 billion US dollars. That's just shipping on water. Shipping on land is a lot more accessible to you, and here's how the math breaks down. The average gross per truck is between $4,000 and $10,000 per week. An owner-operator who owns a company and manages operations can earn a take-home pay of $2,000 to $5,000 a week. An investor can earn a profit of $500 to $2,000 per truck per week. The average truck will cost between $125,000 and $150,000. Don't have enough money for a truck? Well, a car will do, and apps like Uber and Lyft allow you to move people around for profit. On average, Uber drivers earn about $8 to $12 per hour. Full-time drivers in busy locations can earn over $50,000 a year, to a point where people are making a business out of buying cheaper cars and getting drivers on a salary to drive around. But if you zoom out and look at it globally, on an individual level, a recent study showed that Uber drivers make only $364 a month, since most people don't drive full time. But no matter how times evolve, shipping in all its forms will forever be one of the most lucrative businesses. Number six, fashion. We used to need clothes. Now, we have too many clothes. We got to the point of fast fashion and more recently, ultra fast fashion. The global textile industry has crossed the $1 trillion threshold this year. Profit margins for retail clothes are generally within a range of 4 to 13%, according to industry analysts. But this is for the mass-produced pieces, where a good portion of the inventory gets destroyed or hopefully repurposed. 85% of our clothes end up in landfills or burned. The only way to go about the fashion industry today is through culture. We were super intrigued by the way Virgil Abloh did it with Off-White and how he played the game of fashion. Before he died, he compiled everything into a one-page website with everything you need to start your own fashion brand. The link is virgilabloh.com slash free dash game. It was his way of giving back. Number seven, commerce. Every business out there is in the buy low, sell high business. Some might be buying materials, others products, even other people's time. If money is exchanged, you're in the commerce business. The moment you see commerce in action, buy something for cheap and sell it for profit, no matter what it is, you will never be the same. Conceptually, most people think they understand this, but it's only after you experience it internally that you realize you'll never work for someone else again. Here are three ingredients to commerce that you need to know. One, source a product. Two, transport market package. Three, find a client in demand who's willing to pay more than you did and pocket the difference. We guarantee that no matter where you are in the world, there are plenty of opportunities for you to engage in commerce for profit. Here's the golden rule you need to know. Your profit is made at the point of purchase, not at the point of sale. This means that you make your money when you buy the product under the market value and sell it to people who are willing to pay a fair price. And that's what most people get wrong. They buy at the normal price and then try to sell for higher. Number eight, weddings, events, and funerals. The immutable truths of life are the following. 
You're born, you grow up, live, and then you die. It's the cycle of life. Every human being goes through more or less the same cycle. As long as you can figure out a business model that taps into this cycle, you will forever have customers. People love to spend discretionary income on events and celebrations. The wedding service market is expected to reach almost half a trillion dollars by 2030. And at the other end of the cycle, people are making bank on funerals. You might be surprised to hear this, but the average funeral in the US costs between $7,000 and $12,000, with a profit margin between 30 and 60%. Now, personally, it's one of those businesses we would never do, no matter how profitable it is. Think about it. On a daily basis, you interact with people who've had one of the worst experiences in their life. Run the experiment long enough and it will certainly take a toll on your mental health. Number 9. Kindergartens and Childcare Jumping on to a happier note, kids. Childcare and child-related products aren't going away, probably ever. They'll only get better with time. There are two incentives to spend money here. One, it frees up the adult to go out into the economy while the child is still being cared for. And two, we want our kids to get better tools to tackle life than we did, so we're willing to spend money. The global early childhood education market size is expected to continue growing at 10.5% per year and eventually reach $480 billion by 2026. We're super interested in everything children-related and have been fascinated to discover the profit margins on everything kid-friendly. So much so that a while back, we launched a second channel called New Parents, which we plan on resurrecting once we become parents ourselves. We think we need an Alux specifically for parents, so we invite you to click in the top right corner and subscribe over there. And we don't stop at YouTube. You know we have the Alux app, right? Well, we're currently working on a learning pack specifically tailored to Aluxer parents who want to develop the most important parts of their child's minds from an early age. So go to alux.com app and make sure you don't miss the notification. Number 10. Loans and Financial Services People need access to money. Others need their money protected. There's always money to be made in the money business. This entire video is about businesses that will be forever around. And although money takes many forms, there's always going to be a demand for capital as long as you can provide the right collateral. That's why lending, insurance, and safekeeping will always be evergreen. Money-related businesses are always mathematical. You make a certain percentage, you factor in a potential loss, and then run the experiment over and over again. This is how banks got so freaking rich. And it doesn't matter if crypto will eat the financial world as we know it. The fundamental services will continue to be here. Number 11. Hotels Hotels are a different breed of real estate. We love hotels. We've loved them since we were kids playing Monopoly. A well-placed hotel will forever print money. The more time goes by, the more the nightly fare will go up, and so will profits. You're getting the best of both worlds. The building is appreciating, the value of the business is exponential, and you've got consistent cash flow coming in. The gross profit margin fluctuates from year to year, but usually averages out to 30%. The average hotel receives 65% of its revenue from room bookings, 25% from food and beverage sales, and the rest from other shops located on the hotel's property. But there are hotels out there connected to larger businesses, such as casinos, which will derive more revenue from those activities. And you don't really have to be a hotel to test out the hotel business. Sites like Airbnb allow you to rent your property to tourists the same way you would if you were a hotel. And this isn't a sponsorship by Airbnb, but we personally have properties that we're renting out through them. And it's also one of the reasons we are continuously buying shares in the company, as we showed you last Sunday. Number 12. Military There's money in war, and war will always be evergreen. The planet has been in conflict for millennia. Tie any business to war or conflict and you will cash in if that's what you're looking for. 
the military gets its budget from the state. They basically print money to give to the military, so they don't really care if they're overpaying for things. Like $37 screws, a $7,622 coffee maker, $640 toilet seats. You get the idea. Military companies have become some of the richest in the world because of their direct pipeline to the national treasury. If you don't have the connections to tap into the state budget, you can still tap into the military budget as soldiers need housing, food, and most of the other businesses mentioned on this list. Number 13. Energy Energy in all its shapes and forms is fundamental to human progress. The world has run on coal, oil, and gas for so long. Electricity is the new fuel. Although the means of producing energy have evolved over time, the purpose remains the same, and the demand for it is only growing. Everything around us runs on electricity. Pretty soon, your money will be digital, your car will be electric, and you will work in the metaverse, consuming electricity in the process. It's just a matter of time until almost everything will move to electric or hydrogen. Find ways to generate electricity and you can sell it to the grid. The average operating gross profit in the past five years is 45.4% for the hydropower industry. Number 14. Telecom. This used to be traditional mail, then wired phones, then mobile phones, then satellite, internet, and whatever else is coming. There is money in communication, and there always will be. It's no wonder some of the richest people in the world right now are in the telecom business. Carlos Slim Halu was the richest man in the world for three years due to his telecommunications empire. You might not be putting your satellites in space in the early days of your business, but there is a value in data. Data security is one of the fastest growing spaces, and you might want to see if it's the right fit for you. Number 15. Waste Management We saved the best one for last, didn't we? You don't realize just how important waste management is and how profitable it can be. The global waste management market was valued at 1.61 trillion US dollars in 2020, and it's predicted to grow by 50% this decade. We have a lot more waste to deal with than ever. Waste management companies have an average margin of close to 40%. It's actually one of the easiest businesses to start, and all of your customers are recurring if you do your job right. You can start small and move up to companies and even municipalities. Your business goal in life is to build an evergreen company that will provide for you and those you love for years to come. Hopefully one of your children or grandchildren can inherit it. That's how you build legacy wealth. So based on what you've learned today, what evergreen business do you plan to own? Let us know in the comments. Oh, so you're still around, are you? Fine, we'll do a bonus. If the goal is to build wealth, observe who the wealthy are. We want you to do a quick Google search. Look for the top 100 richest people in the world right now and see what they do for a living. There are no short-term traders among the 100 richest people in the world for a reason. All of these people in the top 100 have played the long game. The fact that they're the richest right now is the result of tapping into the peak of a market 20 years ago, or longer in almost half of their cases. There was a time when the richest people were bankers. Before that, it was the industrialists. Now, it's tech. Look at how many have remained in the top 100 for longer periods of time. That's how you build those long-term businesses. We don't want to say too much right now, but we're working on something that we think you'll love in the Alux app. We're developing a specific learning pack with everything we know about building wealth that will be available for everyone who has a subscription. The pack will sell for $24.99. If you've got either a yearly or monthly subscription, you'll still be able to absorb all of that knowledge. But we've already said too much. If you've made it to the very end of this video, write evergreen in the comments, as we hope you will forever be in the green when it comes to your money.
Thank you for watching this video, Alexer. If you found it valuable, consider subscribing to our channel and joining our awesome community. And if you're still hungry for more, we handpicked this video for you to watch next, or head over to our website for more amazing content. See you tomorrow.